traveled to Rome to speak to the Pope and he wanted two things from the Pope. He wanted his brother Knut to be declared a saint which was an important uh, step in showing the world that the lands of the Vikings are starting to get civilized. And the other thing that he wanted was for the Nordic countries to be to form their own archbishopry, to be torn away from the German archbishopry, uh, which was called Bremen. The Pope promised him this. So, King Eric, he went home and uh, pretty satisfied with himself. Now, the king, he lived long enough to see his brother be declared a saint, Saint Knut of Denmark, but he did not little, live long enough to see the Nordic countries become their own archbishop seat. Now he died and his brother took over, uh, Kung Niels he was called, and he received the cardinal from Rome which declared the, arch, uh, the Nordic countries to become their own archbishop seat. Now. I'm not a big fan of this king, I consider him a coward, and uh, as you will discover during my tale, apparently cowardice runs in the family, because you see, his son, Magnus, he felt threatened by the old king's sons, the old king had two sons, and one of them was here in Skåne. Uh, the so southern part of Sweden. During those days, this part of Sweden was actually Danish. It was the uh, Denmark's corn production. Everything here is flat, really, really flat. The soil is really good and they could produce a lot of corn, so it was the Danish corn production. Eric, the old king's son, he was here in Skåne, and the other son was in Denmark. Now the text says that he was a holy man. And that could be as simple as that, as he was a priest or something of that kind. Now the new king's son, Magnus, he told that he wanted to meet the old king's son, Knut Lavander. So he invited him into 
well, it basically was a desolate area, not many people around. So he invited him there. He had some men with him, soldiers, that were loyal to the coward of a king's son. So they got him there, and Magnus, the cowardly Dane, drew his sword and chopped his head off. Well, not all of his head, just the top part from ear to ear. So his brain saw the light of day, and it ran out. They also stabbed him with spears and chopped him with swords. They actually made meat paste out of him. Not long after this, uh, the king, the new king and his son, they went down to Germany and talked to the emperor. Now, there has been some development in Germany because the Archbishop of Bremen, he didn't really like that the Nordic countries had become their own. So, well, it was because that he lost a lot of land, he lost a lot of riches, and he lost a lot of power because of it. So, he talked to the German king and complained. And he said that he wanted the Nordic countries back. And the German king, he promised him this. The German king invited the Danish king and his son down to Germany, where the cowardly King Knut promised him that the, he would get the Nordic, Nordic countries back. And uh, yeah, because he basically wanted the German emperor's favor. He wanted him on his good side. So he sold out the Nordic countries. Meanwhile, back here in Skåne, the old king's remaining son, Eric, was furious with anger. He was driven mad by this cowardly ambush of this despicable coward of a king's son. So he actually rebelled. He gathered all the troops here in Skåne, and he threw out the, he took over the navy in Skåne, and he barred the harbor from the Danish kings. And the, the Danish Navy. Now word had come up here in Skåne that the king, the Danish king, had promised the Archbishop of Bremen the Nordic countries back. The Archbishop here in Lund, which was the Archbishop of the Nordic countries, he had heard this. So he actually knew that if Eric, the, re the rebel, lost the war, he would lose his Archbishop seat. So, he put the church behind him. He gave him wealth, he gave him food, he even gave him soldiers. So the church here in southern Sweden started to prepare for war. In this battle, there are two records. One is a Nordic record, the other is a world record. And I will get to these. Because the Danish king started gathering his troops and his army and his navy over in Denmark. And he placed troops all around the coast because he didn't want anyone to come and warn Eric that he was about to attack. Now there was one place they didn't guard. And it's a huge cliff falling right down into the sea. They didn't think think anyone was mad enough to try and get down there, but thankfully for Eric, there was one man mad enough to do it. His name was Magnus Saxeson, and he used a long rope, and he lowered himself down during the night, and he swam over to Skåne. It isn't that far, but it's treacherous waters, so he'd have, he would have to have been a really strong swimmer. So he got over here and warned Eric, so they could be prepared. Now, on the morning of the 4th of June, as far as we can tell, based on the difference in calendars and stuff like that, but as far as we can tell, it was the morning of the 4th of June in the year 1134. The Danish army arrived, and it was right there around here on the beach. 
between the beginning and 500 meters up. So it was right here. The Danish king put his army in battle formation down at the beach. He gathered his troops, put them in order, and after a couple of minutes, they could see on the, on the horizon a great big dust cloud gathering. And the ground began to shake. Now this is the Nordic record, because Eric, with the help of the uh, Swedish church, had hired mercenaries from Germany, cavalry, and that is a first in the Nordic battle history, a cavalry used in war. Now the cowardly king, he got terrified of this, so he actually ordered a retreat, 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 they have cavalry, they will mow us down. The, so the Danish soldiers panicked. They started running out at sea again and started to climb aboard the boats. And, the, and there were so many of them that the soldiers already on the boat, they were afraid that the boat would tip over. So they drew their swords and drew their axes and started chopping off the arms and hands of their fellow soldiers. So actually, when you think about it, the Danish soldiers treated their own worse than the enemy did. Previously, I called the, the king's son a despicable coward of a man. I will actually take that back now, because he proved his valor in this battle. He stayed behind with some of his fellow brave soldiers, and he knew that he would face death. He knew that this was a battle that he could not win. But he stayed, and they fought to the last man. And when they finally killed him, he was surrounded by Swedish soldiers and German cavalry. So he proved his valor in battle that day. And now I come to the world record. Because the Danish king... He was so sure of his victory that he had brought with him several bishops, all the Danish bishops he had brought with him, because he wanted to anoint them and then take back the Nordic countries to the Bremen Archbishopry. So they had brought with them six bishops, well, five bishops, and one that was supposed to be anointed in Lund, which is a city not far from here. So... It, Depending on how you count it, it's five plus one future bishop. And a whole lot of priests. And all the bishops were killed. Every single one of them. Along with a lot of priests. So that's a world record. In no other battle in history has more bishops been killed in a single battle. Five or six bishops, depending on how you count, was killed. Now, King, no, sorry, now Eric, the rebel, he won this battle, and with it, he actually won the favor of the Danish people. Uh, King Niels, he retreated to Denmark. Three weeks later, he was murdered by one of his own. Uh, the rebel Eric was crowned king in his stead. So, he chose the city of Lund here in Sweden for his capital and king seat. So for three whole years, Lund was the capital of Denmark. Well, until he as well was murdered. Being a king was not as easy in those days as it is now. And that is the Battle of Futevik.